वेलकम टू मैनचेस्टर मेट्रोपॉलिटन यूनिवर्सिटीज फिजियोथेरापी वीडियो पॉडकास्ट माय नेम इज स्मारक मिश्रा एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फिजियोलॉजिकल रेस्पॉन्स टू एक्सरसाइज एंड हाउ टू सेफली प्रिस्क्राइब एक्सरसाइजेस टू आवर क्लाइंट्स बिफोर वी स्टार्ट डेल्विंग इन टू द टाइम्स ऑफ एक्सरसाइज हियर आर ए फ्यू ब्रेन टीजर्स just have a look at these questions and see if you can answer those uh, these uh, questions are actually relevant to this lecture so take your time in this session we are going to explore how the respiratory system responds to exercise how the cardiovascular system responds to exercise and uh, what are the indicators of exercise intensity and how do you predict uh, the rate of work uh, and how is it measured it is important to understand how human body gets uh, uh, the energy to fuel exercises there are three types of systems that basically fuel the exercises and those are called atp PCR or ATP phospho phosphocreatinin system, lactic acid system, and the third one is called the oxidative system. Now there was a question about uh, the amount of time taken for hundred meter sprint. Uh, for men, it is less than ten seconds, and for women, it is uh, a little bit more than ten seconds, but uh, it's around ten seconds uh, on an average. So what? how do the athletes get uh, energy to run so fast now this kind of uh, maximal effort maximal sprinting effort requires energy to be used straight away by muscles and how does the energy get produced actually the, this energy is not being produced it is always there stored in the body in the form of atp and if it is not in the form of atp it is in the form of phosphocreatinin and a very quick chemical reaction produces atp out of phosphocreatinin now this is a very very fast system so you uh, you uh, say why uh, does the system last for just 10 seconds now the the important limiting factor for not having too much of atp storage in the body is that atp is a large molecule and in order to store a sufficient amount of atp for fueling a maximal exercise for an hour we need to have the size of a dinosaur if uh, not an elephant now evolutionarily it is not uh, not nice to have a large body the large body comes with its limitations hence we have got about 10 seconds of energy storage that can fuel us for maximal effort but after 10 second what happens where do we get the energy from now then comes the lactic acid system now lactic acid system is also a very fast system of producing uh, the energy molecule of the body which is the adenosine triphosphate so here a glucose molecule very quickly breaks down without the presence of oxygen to produce two atp molecules now there is no oxygen involved in this process and that's why this this system is called the anaerobic system the energy system that does not utilize oxygen now again you can do maximal exercise for up, up to Two and a half minutes to three three minutes, depending upon your level of fitness, uh, without utilizing oxygen. Mind you, all the time you are breathing in, but the oxygen takes its time to reach uh, the muscle where um, energy is required. And because you are not utilizing oxygen, you build up something called as lactic acid, and this lactic acid uh, is quite toxic. uh and if you carry on doing maximal exercises what happens is that you get get pain in the muscle cramps and uh, then you have to have to stop so the limiting factor to 
the anaerobic system or the lactic acid system is accumulation of lactic acid. Now, as I said before, this is a fast system, provides immediate uh, um, energy molecule for activities. So, it can sustain maximal activity. But you cannot keep on continuing maximal activity beyond a certain point of time. Then comes uh, the oxidative system. In fact, oxidative system utilizes oxygen and in the presence of oxygen, a glucose molecule produces a net of 32 ATPs. A net. Uh, there are more than 32 ATPs produced in the process, but actually some of them are con consumed in the process of this production. So the net production is about 32 ATP molecules. So it's a large number of ATP molecules from one glucose uh, um, molecule. Um, so hence it is, uh, it is efficient but it takes time. It is a slow process but it is more efficient in the sense that it produces more number of molecules uh, of ATP as compared to the lactic acid system. Now, because the oxygen has to reach uh, the muscle um, uh, in order for, um, uh, for releasing all these ATP molecules, it is a slow process and hence you cannot maintain maximal level of activity. Now, so that's why aerobic system is essentially a sub-maximal level of activity. Bec now that you understand the different systems, let's uh, have some examples of, of different activities using these energy systems. Long distance uh, cycling, uh, jogging, long distance swimming, these are all examples of aerobic activities. We all know that. So these exercises actually utilize the aerobic system and these are sub-maximal exercises. On the other hand, activities like sprint, weightlifting requires maximal effort. Hence, they utilize ATP PCR system or, and or um, the lactic acid or the anaerobic system. Now we'll explore the physiological response of the respiratory system to exercise. At rest, we are uh, breathing normally. It's not a deep breath, it's a relaxed uh, breath. But once you start doing exercises, you note that the rate of uh, respiration increases and the depth also increases. By that, what we mean is that we breathe more number of times per minute and we breathe deeper. Why do we do that? The, the muscles require oxygen and, uh, the, and when you are doing any exercise, you breathe in to provide that increased need for oxygen. So, so that's why when you breathe deeper and uh, more number of times, you have got more ability to provide the increased amount of oxygen to the tissue. If you look at the graph here, you can see that uh, with increase in intensity of exercise, there is uh, initially a gradual increase in rate, respiratory rate, but uh, as the exercises become strenuous, that means uh, it becomes very hard, then there is a steep increase in both uh, respiratory rate and depth. The long-term response of the respiratory system to exercise is that um, there is increased efficiency of the ventilatory muscles. By that, what, uh, what uh, physiologists mean is that the respiratory muscles don't have to work as hard uh, uh, as uh, in untrained individuals to breathe in the same amount of oxygen. And uh, also, there is increased thoracic expansion. So your chest expands more, so that's why you are able to breathe in more amount of uh, air per breath, hence your uh, efficiency increases. Sometimes there is abnormal response uh, of breathing to exercises. 
you must have all felt um, if you're putting in strong amount of effort then you start uh, feeling breathless in some people the breathlessness is more than uh, other in response to exercise and this uh, is called dyspnea this could be because of several lesions uh, it could be uh, because of inherent uh, uh, cardiorespiratory uh, problems uh, but it uh, could be an issue with fitness as well the other um, phenomenon that may occur is called the hyperventilation we understand that during exercise the oxygen demand of the body increases however if you are breath breathing more amount of air than it is required you are suddenly increasing the oxygen concentration in the blood and eliminating the carbon dioxide which can lead to devastating consequences so hyperventilation although initially may seem to be a natural response to exercise uh, high intensity exercise especially can lead this can lead to um, many problems later on one of uh, the common issues with hyperventilation is that you feel dizzy and you faint now let's explore the cardiovascular response uh, to exercise at rest your blood is basically being pumped into the visceral organs uh, especially the heart the lungs and the in intestines as well as the liver once you start doing exercise your uh, muscles uh, of the periphery that means the upper limb lower limb and to some extent the trunk require oxygen and that's why the blood um, the richly oxygenated blood uh, being pumped from the heart has to reach these muscles and uh, this is done at the cost of uh, um, the blood supply to the viscera so the blood is basically shunted uh, from um, the visceral organs to the muscles and uh, as you increase the intensity of exercise it is very common to note that your heart starts pounding that means the heart uh, rate increases and the stroke volume increases so heart rate is the number of beats per minute so that will increase with exercise and stroke volume is uh, the amount of blood that is pumped with one contraction of uh, the heart and because uh, the heart is being filled with more amount of blood it can pump out more amount of blood so all altogether the pumping effect of the heart increases and the rate increases so the amount of blood pumped per minute is going to increase.